Now that we know how to write the equation of a plane in space, we can talk about problems like how do you find the distance from a point to a plane in space. So we have our plane in orange, we have a point out in space called S. We can tell that the point S is not inside of the plane. It's somewhere out in space. In the definition of a plane, we have a given point P0 and a perpendicular vector N. So anytime we're looking at the equation of a plane, we should be able to find those two things. We want the shortest distance from the point S straight to the plane, which I've got in red here. We want to make a vector from the point P0 that we pulled from the equation of the plane to the point S out in space. We see that in blue. And then we want to slide things around. Remember that we can move things in space without changing their size or direction. It's called a translation. We're just going to slide things over so that the normal vector is aligned with the initial point. And from here, we can see that the distance that we're looking for, it's really a projection of the blue vector onto the white vector. So to answer our question about distance, we're really just calculating a vector projection. The distance is the projection of the P0 to S vector onto the normal vector from the plane. And we're just taking the magnitude of that projection. The scalar component of a projection can be calculated using the absolute value of the dot product in the numerator and then the magnitude of the vector that you're projecting onto in the denominator. So for our vectors, instead of u dot v, we'll have p0 s dotted with n, and instead of the magnitude of u in the denominator, since we're projecting onto the vector n, we should have the magnitude of n in the denominator. So let's give it a shot. We know that we can calculate the distance simply by creating a vector from a point in the plane out to the point S in space. And then using the normal vector from the plane, we can dot those two vectors together, find the magnitude, sorry, absolute value, and then divide that by the magnitude of the normal vector. So let's get it started. First thing we need to do, let's create that P0 to S vector. We see the components for S, but we need to find a point P0. To find P0, all we need to do is come up with an XYZ that solves this equation. Finding that point P0 can feel complicated because it's a little bit like a guess and check kind of thing. My recommendation is look for things that are simple. For example, I need an x, a y, and a z that I can plug into this equation so that it's equal to 5. Well, the easiest point I could imagine would just be 5, 0, 0. If I plug in 5 for x, if I plug in 0 for y, and I plug in 0 for z, that definitely satisfies that equation. There are many other points that satisfy the equation. In fact, there are infinitely many points. We just need one. So we found one, we're gonna move on. The vector P0 to S, it's gonna look like the components of S minus the P0. So we'll have negative two, one, two. And then from there, I need to dot that with the normal vector from the plane. So looking at our plane equation, the components of n are the coefficients on x, y, and z. x has a coefficient of 1, y has a coefficient of negative 2, z has a coefficient of 1. So the normal vector will look like 1, negative 2, 1. Next I'll dot those together. And dot product's commutative, so even though in my formula I have the n vector first, it doesn't matter. We can write it in whatever order we want.
multiply our corresponding components, we get a dot product of negative 2. The absolute value of that dot product is what we put in the numerator, so we have a positive 2 on top. Next, we need to calculate the magnitude of n, the normal vector from our plane. To get root 6. So our final answer for the distance is 2 over root 6. Again, that is the exact value. But if we wanted to approximate that to have a better intuitive understanding of what that distance looks like, we can type it into a calculator and find that we are at approximately 0 0.8 units. Another neat application of understanding equations of lines and planes in space is that we can represent the intersection of two planes. On the screen you see a blue plane and a red plane, and if you could imagine having 3D glasses on, you could see that those planes are intersecting in a way that crosses the green line. We want to find that line of intersection. We're going to look for the parametric equations that represent that green line. To do that, we're going to look at each of the equations for the planes. Um, I'm going to arbitrarily label these as the planes in the picture. So our first plane, I'll call that the blue plane. And then the second plane, I'll call that the red plane. So we're looking at the picture of these two planes intersecting, and we want to find the equation for the line of intersection. First thing I want to do is point out that this red plane is going to have a vector that is perpendicular to it, right? A normal vector for the red plane, which is perpendicular to the entire plane. And the blue plane will have the same idea, the blue plane will have some normal vector. And if I arrange those so that they're at the line of intersection, looks like we'll have the red vector will kind of point up, the blue vector will kind of point out. We don't know the relationship between those. We have no idea. We could calculate it if we want, but we really don't care what the angle between the red and the blue vector is. But if we cross those two vectors, then we'll get a vector that's parallel to this intersection line. It'll be parallel, sorry, perpendicular to the red vector, and it'll be perpendicular to the blue vector. So we need that vector so that we can describe the line. So that vector that we're looking for comes from the cross product of the vector that we pull from the red plane and the vector that we pull from the blue plane. So the normal vector from the blue plane looks like it has components 1, 1, 1, because those are the co coefficients on the variables. The vector for the red plane looks like it has components 2, negative 1, 1. So to find the vector v that we want for the line of intersection, we're going to cross the blue plane, I'll call that like N1, and the red plane, I'll call that N2. So if we cross those vectors, we'll find the vector parallel to our line of intersection. Here we can see that the vector parallel to our line has components 2, 1, negative 3. I'm going to write that in component form because I like component form better than the standard unit vector notation most of the time. Now to write the equation for the line, we still need one more thing. I just wrote that. The equation of a line requires a parallel vector, v. We have that and a point on the line. We need to find a point that's on both the red plane and the blue plane. It does not matter what point we use as long as it satisfies both equations of the planes. So let's look for a point. Equation 
Essentially, if we're looking for one point, x, y, z, that's on both planes, then we're trying to solve this system of equations. But that has three variables and only two equations. And that's an underdetermined system, which means we're going to have to find a way to narrow it down to pick a single point, because there's infinitely many solutions to this system of equations. So what we'll do is a little bit of hand wavy decision making. I know that these planes are not parallel to either the x equals zero plane or the y equals zero plane or the z equals zero plane, meaning none of the planes, neither the blue nor the red, are parallel to our coordinate planes, which means they have to pass through each of the coordinate planes. And if they have to pass through each of the coordinate planes, our line is going to have to pass through each of the coordinate planes. So let's look for the point that passes through the xy plane. Doing that is forcing z to be equal to zero. Now, z is not always equal to zero. I hope we all understand that. But in this case, I'm looking for the point on both planes where z is zero. The reason why we want to do that is it greatly simplifies the equations that we're looking at. Now we have two equations, two unknowns. We can use addition to eliminate the y here. Adding our equations together, we get 3x equals 0, which means x equals 0. If x plus y equals 0, where x is 0, then y has to be 0. So we just found that both planes pass through the origin. The point we found is 0, 0, 0. And if we're not comfortable or confident that that works, come back to your equations of your planes and check. If I plug in x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, the blue equation is satisfied. And also, so is the red. So this point satisfies both plane equations, which means we are happy to use it. Then we're going to write up the parametric equations for that line using the vector v that we just found and the point p that we just found. Now I've written out the zeros for x0, y0, z0 in the parametric equations, but they're really unnecessary. Probably the best answer would be x equals 2t y equals t, and z equals negative 3t. It's unnecessary to put 0 plus anything. So for this problem, we first had to recognize that we needed a vector parallel to the line of intersection. And we realized, based on our picture, that we could find that by crossing the normal vectors from the two planes that we were given. So we found the cross product between the two normal vectors, and we used that vector as the parallel vector to our line. Then we needed to find a point that satisfied both plane equations. We did that by narrowing down the points that we would consider to only the point that would pass through the xy plane. And then we solved that to find that that point would have to be the origin itself, so together with the vector and the point, we created the parametric equations for that green line in our picture.